The Magic Archer is an advanced vocation in Dragon's Dogma 2 and is one of the most difficult to unlock in the game. Unlocking this vocation, along with its maester skill, Martyr's Bolt, involves getting to the Agamemnon Volcanic Island and completing an easily missed quest, all of which will be covered in this guide. As usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. Before getting started, the quest to get the Magic Archer will require a few wildflowers. I found that one green warish, one grand petal, and one gold thistle did the trick. If you don't have any in storage, just keep an eye out for them on your journey towards the volcanic island. Also, this guide is designed to help everyone including new players that have yet to enter Batal. With that in mind, it's a good idea to be around level 30 before taking on this journey. In addition, I highly recommend bringing at least one port crystal, and more than one if you have it. And with that, let's get going. First, we will need to journey into Batal. There are three ways to do this, and the first way is the least difficult, but it will be time consuming and requires progressing through some of the main story quests. Specifically, we will need to meet with Bran at the Stardrop Inn, located in Vernworth. He will have a series of quests for us to complete, including Monster Culling, Deza's Plot, The Caged Magistrate, The Nameless Village, The Arisen Shadow, An Unsettling Encounter, and finally, The Stolen Throne. Once most or all of these quests have been completed, Brant will start us on the Feast of Deception quest. It is completing this quest that will get us the Border Entry Permit. With that in hand, we can take the Western Ox Cart from Vernworth to the Checkpoint Rest Town, and then use the permit to gain passage into Batal. There are also two other paths that can be taken into Batal at any time without a permit, but they each contain several difficult boss mobs and many more basic enemies. The first of these paths is accessed near the checkpoint rest town. From there, we can head down to the riverbed by moving east out of the town. Once there, we can follow the river west and climb up some rocks into a large natural tunnel. This will open up to a pass that goes around the checkpoint gate and leads directly into Batal. Given the presence of high threat enemies, I recommend being around level 20 or higher before trying to go this way. Alternatively, you might be able to just run past the enemies if they are giving you a hard time. The other side path to reach Batal is through Guerco Cavern. This path can be found a short distance west of Har Village However, I would say that this path takes longer and is more difficult to navigate than the pass near the checkpoint rest town. Now, I wish I could say that that was the hardest part to getting the magic archer, but the truth is we're just getting started. Next, we've got to make our way to the Agamemnon Volcano Island. The quickest way to reach it is by journeying west and then south of Bak Batal, past the Digger's Ruins and Sand Spire Den. This will take us to the Drabner's Grotto, a dungeon with some really mean enemies and boss mobs. This dungeon is worth exploring on your own time, as there are some pretty cool and unique items. However, for the purpose of this video, I cleared the grotto in advance and will just be showing the most direct path to get through it. The main path should initially move us east, then turn south towards a descending spiral tunnel. At the bottom, we'll move north down another small tunnel, which exits into a larger chamber. Our next checkpoint is to the southeast down a fairly steep drop. This will land us in the cavern with the Cyclops, 
where we'll then turn and move northeast and perform a couple jumps to stay up on the elevated path. We can then move towards the south and hop our way down to an even lower level. From here, it's just one path to take and a straight shot to the volcanic island. Not long after exiting Drabnir's Grotto and entering the volcanic island, we'll stumble upon a dwarf by the name of Goutstifer. Speaking to him will start the Put a Spring in Thy Step quest, which will lead us to unlocking the Magic Archer vocation and Maester skill. The first step in the quest is to give Goutstifer three wildflowers. I gave him one green warish, one grand petal, and one gold thistle, and that did the trick. Afterwards, Goutstifer should tell us to meet him at his home before departing. Next, we can continue moving east into the volcanic island. There will be a fork in the road a short distance beyond a campsite. Taking the northern path will lead us directly to Windwalker's home, which is where Goutstifer resides. Upon our arrival, we will meet Goutstifer's wife. After a short exchange, we can follow Goutstifer into his home, where he will be having more back problems. After looting the nearby chest, we can speak with the dwarf and offer to escort him to the hot springs at Geyser Hamlet. Now, we must take this task slowly, otherwise we run the risk of leaving Goutstifer behind, which could potentially fail the quest or otherwise cause it to bug out. And that actually happened to me during my first attempt at this quest. In any case, Geyser Hamlet is located a moderate distance to the east within the volcanic island camp. So long as we stay on the roads, take our time, and deal with all threats along the way, we should be able to get Goutstifer there safely. If anything goes terribly wrong, or causes the game to bug out, we can revert to our last long rest at an inn, but that would put us back a significant amount of time. So only do it if you are absolutely certain that the quest has either failed or bugged out. Once inside the Volcanic Island camp, we can reach Geyser Hamlet by climbing the ladder to the west of the Weapons and Armor Shop. As a side note, this shop has some of the best armor and weapons in the game, but I digress. Once we've successfully escorted Goutstifer to Geyser Hamlet and following a short cutscene, the dwarf's wife, Cleodna, will emerge, speak to us, and reward us with the Magic Archer Vocation, Laurel Circlet, and 23,000 gold. In addition, she should speak with us once more to hand over the Spellbow's Paradox. If she does not give this item, try increasing your affinity with her by gifting a beautiful, rare, or valuable item, such as a bunch of flowers. That will usually fix this sort of problem. Assuming there are no issues, once we go to a vocation guild and actually purchase the Magic Archer vocation with discipline points, we can then use the Spellbow's Paradox item to learn the Magic Archer Maester's teaching, Martyr's Bolt. This skill has the potential to do an incredible amount of damage. However, it also sacrifices the user's maximum health as a trade-off. Because of this, its use is fairly limited. That being said, the Magic Archer is still a great vocation overall, and it can be a lot of fun to melt bosses with the Martyr's Bolt on occasion. Also, if we return to Windwalker's home, Goutstifer should be found in the general vicinity. He has some of the game's stronger weapons and armor for sale, as well as some unique rings that seem to be geared towards melee fighters. He can also perform dwarven enhancements for us, which imbue weapons with the ability to make foes flinch and renders armor more resistant to solid blows. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me in the comments where I will do my best to help. If you want to see more great guides, you can head over to my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day if you're here today, have a great Friday, and a great weekend. And as always, thanks for watching.